Now, it's time for your weather focus. All righty, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in to Weather Focus. I am Chief Meteorologist Patrick Bigby. We got a lot to talk about today, but really the big story is the rain that continues to fall here across South Mississippi. Take a look at that very heavy rain uh, coming down right now up at South Central Regional Medical Center. It is so nice to finally see some rain fall out there. Currently they're at 70 degrees. We're going to show you what the radar looks like coming up here in just a second. Some of the other things we're going to talk about today is check out this. This right here is a different type of storm. It's on the other coast as well. This is a dust storm that rolled through California. We'll give it the latest details on that. And then Nick will also be talking Talking about Jupiter. We got some new images of the planet. An amazing look at the planet there. A lot of scientific intel and Nick will have the latest on that coming up. But first, let's go ahead and start off with uh, some of the things that we're tracking right now. So here's what we're talking about at the moment. What to expect for the rest of today. We're going to continue to see cool weather uh, as we go into tomorrow and into Friday. Much nicer uh, weather ahead, a lot of sunshine for your weekend, and then we're going to see another front roll through uh, by the middle part of next week, and that front will give us not only the chance of some more rain showers, but also possibly a bigger blast of cold air. But right now we're continuing to track the rain out there at the moment. Here you can see it over into this box right here on Southern Pine Electric Radar. Right now the heaviest stuff, I'm going to zoom into it, is over towards the Laurel area. So we're seeing some very heavy rain around Ellisville, Johnson, out towards Myrick. All this continues to lift off towards the north and east. And as you saw with that sky cam there, this is some heavy rain. And it's putting down some good rainfall totals currently at the moment as it moves off towards the north and east. The city of Hattiesburg a bit in a lull at the moment, but we could see more showers and thunderstorms develop later into the afternoon. There's more rain off towards the west towards Tyler Town, and as we take a wider look across the region, one thing you'll notice there is a line developing off towards the west towards Natchez. That will be the cold front and that'll come through the area eventually later on this evening. But as I take you on a little bit of a wider look here uh, across the uh, area, you'll notice one thing. We're not done with the rain. In fact, there is more rain offshore that'll be moving into the area most likely later on this afternoon towards Louisiana that'll be lifting into our area. So we've already picked up some good rainfall totals in our neck of the woods. Truly over the last 12 to 24 hours, rainfall totals have been decent. Uh, and as you can see, we got some darker green areas on the map, basically west of Hattiesburg near Purvis and down towards Poplarville where we picked up uh, right at an inch of rainfall. And I know at my house, I'm looking at the rain gauge right now, nine tenths of an inch of rain since midnight. So this right here is some very healthy rainfall that we have truly needed for South Mississippi. Now, how long will this rain last? And what about the next couple of days? Well, let's toss things over to Rex. All right, thank you, Patrick. We'll take a look at our future cast right now. First of all, our drive time commute forecast this afternoon. I think we'll have some thunderstorms in the area at four o'clock and be lasting through 6 p.m. So the red light is up, so use caution when driving. Uh, the rain can be heavy at times and temperatures mainly in the 70s. Now, on the muggy meter, it's sticky outside currently, and but look at the forecast for Thursday into next Wednesday. We're gonna see a beautiful stretch of weather coming up. Uh, on the muggy meter scale, it'll be amazing on Thursday. It's gonna be great on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday comfortable on Monday and Tuesday and back to uh, great to amazing again on Wednesday as another cold front comes through about next Wednesday with even colder weather than what we're about to get this evening here in the Pine Belt or overnight in the Pine Belt. Now here's your forecast. So about six o'clock tomorrow morning, we saw showers and storms moving through. Now this is the forecast for Thursday morning, upper 50s to uh, right around low 60s. Now here's your forecast during the day on uh, Thursday. It's gonna be beautiful and sunny highs in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Now as we work our way into Friday morning, we dip down into the mid 40s in some locations in the Pine Belt. That's gonna be a big change. This beautiful weather coming up for the weekend and your forecast highs for Friday on the upper 60s to lower 70s. That's the current look at your forecast. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Rex. Let's take a look at the tropics because even though it is the middle of November, basically, 
we should be seeing the tropics getting ready to go to bed, but it is not sleepy yet. And in fact, we have a system that we've been watching and within the last, I would say 10 to 15 minutes, uh, we got a new update on it. This was Invest 99, uh, but the Hurricane Center has pulled the trigger and this is now potential tropical system number 19. Uh, currently, as of the 3 p.m. advisory is 460 miles east of of uh, Honduras. Right now winds are at 30 miles per hour. The pressure very high at 1007 millibars and it is slowly moving off towards the west at about six miles an hour. So the center of it is actually over here. So we have all this shower and thunderstorm activity a little bit removed from where the actual surface area of low pressure is, but this is expected to get its act together in the next couple of days and it is expected to become a tropical storm uh, as we go into Friday and as we go into Friday afternoon, this will eventually uh, pick up steam. We'll see winds getting up to 70 miles an hour, and this is going to be an interesting track over the next couple of days. It's going to kind of do a little loop the loop out here. It's going to kind of get lost in the steering currents, but it eventually will get picked back up once again, and it'll find its way. And right now it looks like it'll most likely uh, head over towards uh, areas such as Belize and out towards Chetamal uh, there into the Yucatan Peninsula as we go into early next week. Now where this system goes beyond that, well the models have been very interested in this and uh, some of them once they take it to the Yucatan weaken it drastically. Some of them meanwhile curve it and take it back towards South Florida. So this is something that we'll have to kind of watch as we go into next week. I don't anticipate this being a threat to us whatsoever in South Mississippi because we're going to see several cold fronts come through. In fact, we got one coming in next week that should grab this system, even if it moves into the Gulf and grab it and force it to the east. So we should be OK with this. Of course, we'll continue to watch it. But notice how the European model just leaves it to sit there near Honduras as we go into the next couple of days. There it is on Monday moving ashore. Notice, though, it, it re blossoms into the Gulf of Mexico. But here comes this cold front as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. That's going to give us a cool down, some rain chances next week, and that would pick up that system and take it safely away from us in South Mississippi. But it may uh, come at the cost of our neighbors in South Florida. Obviously, we got a lot of time to watch this. If that were to happen for South Florida, we're talking about six to seven days out from now, truly. Uh, so we're talking to the middle to late next week. Um, so plenty of time to watch this. And again, I don't anticipate this threatening us in Mississippi, but if it does, if everything changes, we'll be sure to let you know. If it gets a name, which it most likely will, Sarah is going to be the next name on the list. And uh, for those of you named Sarah without an H, this is your storm. If you're Sarah with an H, well, you'll just have to kind of uh, adopt this one. But this is how it's going to go. Sarah is the next name on the list. And again, the tropics should be going to bed by now. It's getting close to its bedtime, but uh, it's still running around the house pretty active right now uh, with that new system developing. And again, hurricane season goes all the way to the end of November. November 30th is the official end of hurricane season, but every once in a while we may see a storm develop in December. We're not seeing that's going to happen this year, but it, it can happen. It does not mean that at the end of hurricane season, everything just shuts down like a factory. So you get the idea, but regardless, we're going to continue to keep you updated on that. Nick. Hey, Patrick, uh, you know, that track was very interesting with that cone. It reminds me of like those uh, comic kind of message bubbles you see above different cartoon characters. But either way, definitely something we're going to be watching out there in the tropics with future Sarah looking to start shaping up and following a few more of the rules we'd expect it to for a typical late season storm relative to Raphael, which just kind of had its own groove for a while. All right. Let's talk about the uh, local area, right? Now, of course, a lot of folks along the Emerald Coast here are going to be experiencing some nice conditions. Sure, some of those rain chances linger into Thursday for some locations, but we're far from a washout. There'll be kind of a few to isolated hit or miss at best there. But you notice in time for Friday, you got a dramatic improvement, but it comes at the cost of a cool off. So a lot of those temperatures, whether you're in the Mississippi Gulf Coast or all the way to Panama City, a lot of those upper 70s will be the name of the game for Thursday before that cool off in the low 70s, possibly even the upper 60s for some locations. Look at that in western Florida 
there in the peninsula. Now, of course, the Gulf continues to cool off as well as we'd expect it to with current Gulf temperatures at 76 degrees. Here's the catch, though. The Raphael might be gone, but we've still got a lot of white caps and rough surf out there. So there's going to be single red flags flying all the way from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And, of course, Alabama extending into Florida. A lot of these locations, knee deep is too deep, as the lifeguards say, when the red flags are flying. So keep in mind that even though the water is closed or the water is not closed at these locations, Still, they're going to be a bit choppy, and of course, life-threatening conditions can happen, especially with that riptide and rip current risk over the course of tomorrow. Patrick, back to you. Hey, well, thank you so much for that, Nick. Well, let's take a look at your national forecast. So we obviously have rain falling here in the southeast today, and it's being caused by this area of low pressure, which is all the way up here into Iowa. It's got a front trailing along towards the south, and that extends all the way down towards the Gulf of Mexico, and it's lifting in some moisture uh, from, if you will believe this, the skeletal remains of what was Raphael last week. The, it's obviously no more, but the moisture doesn't go away just overnight. So it's pulling in that little bit of leftover tropical moisture and it's using it to make some good rainfall that we truly need here in South Mississippi. This rain continues all across the Magnolia State and into Alabama, and it extends also up into portions of Western Kentucky, up towards Eastern Illinois and into Southwestern Indiana for today. Up into the Northeast, it's a beautiful day. Sunshine all across New York, up towards Boston and up into the Finger Lakes region as well. As we extend off towards the West, you're still dealing with some shower activity from that frontal system uh, extending all the way up towards the Canadian border. As you can see, some scattered showers across Minnesota that will be moving into western portions of Wisconsin later today. And then we have another atmospheric river coming ashore into the Pacific Northwest, giving them some rainfall that they need up into Northern California, snow into portions of the Sierras and into the Cascades as well. And that system will continue to march east over the next couple of days. So here it is on Thursday. Well, they'll still be getting rain out towards California into the Pacific Northwest. Meanwhile, the system that's giving us rain in South Mississippi today will slide off towards the east as we go into your day tomorrow, and it'll move offshore by Friday, and we'll see a lot of sunshine across the southeast. Meanwhile, they'll still be seeing snowfall across the uh, Rockies as we go into Friday afternoon into Nevada and into Idaho. Then into Saturday, they're going to continue to see more uh, rainfall and snowfall across the Rockies as we go into Saturday. Sunday, we start to see a new system develop into the southwest that'll move off towards the east as we go into Monday and that's going to have a system uh, that'll give us some more rainfall and it'll also possibly give us some colder air as we go into next week. That, as you'll notice, a lot of the rain will be across the eastern half of the U.S. as we go into today and tomorrow. And meanwhile, they're going to continue to see snow building up into the Rockies. Uh, so travel will be a little bit treacherous out there, especially in some of the passes. Uh, I think I-80 was closed the last couple of days up into California, and they were doing CHP was requiring chain. So it's definitely something that's impacting them in a big way. Afternoon highs across the next couple of days are going to be much cooler across the southeast, and you can actually see that cold air diving in from uh, Canada all across Minnesota down towards Kentucky and into the northeast. Temperatures are going to be much colder, 48 in New York City tomorrow. Afternoon highs into the southeast where they should be into the low 70s. It's crazy how warm we've truly been here in the southeast. So we're going to get a cool down there. Then as we go into Friday, temperatures remain into the 70s, but we may start to warm up a little bit as we go into Saturday. Meanwhile, the western half of the U.S. will remain pretty cold as temperatures will stay into the 40s and into the 50s. Colder temperatures obviously up into the mountains where they'll see snowfall up there. And then by Monday, we'll start to warm back up low 80s. So the temperatures well above normal once again, about 10 degrees above normal across the southeast. But we do have that cool down coming, and that should happen as we go into the middle to late part of next week. Thanks, Patrick. We have some stunning new images. In fact, a bevy of new, truly just mind-blowing images are shedding new light on the solar system's biggest planet and some more of its secrets, right? So, and in doing so, this most eye-popping way is just unimaginable when you think about it. So let's take a look with Jeremy Roth having more on Jupiter. 
Newly released images showing Jupiter in unprecedented high-resolution detail are, how do I put this, uh, mind-blowingly brain-melting. Hyperactive hyperbole aside, you've likely never seen the solar system's largest planet looking like this, and it all comes courtesy of NASA's Juno spacecraft on its 66th flyby of the gas giant. The craft is constantly beaming back images that are impressive in their own right, but select ones are then processed by citizen scientists to bring out color, atmospheric highlights, and details. NASA says images like these not only provide a spectacular look at Jupiter's swirling, turbulent atmosphere, but also countless revelations about the inner workings of this massive and mysterious planet. Another feast for the senses is unfolding in Amsterdam as art technicians are slowly and painstakingly working to restore Rembrandt's famous 1642 masterwork, The Night's Watch, and all in front of a captive audience. The intricate work is taking place behind glass at the Rijksmuseum as the restorers delicately remove old varnish from the massive 12 by 14 foot painting before carefully re-preserving it with new varnish. It's a project years in the making that's now unfolding in real time. Finally, to poetry in motion in the depths of the ocean, where researchers say they've discovered a new species of sea slug, and it's unlike anything they've ever seen. The team at Imbari Research says they first spotted the captivating creature and its clear hood, finger-like tails, and glowing organs way back in 2000, but only recently officially classified it as a new species in a published study. It now has a name, uh, this, but has been nicknamed more accessibly, the mystery mollusk. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Rod. All right, thank you so much. Here we go now. Here is your forecast for this evening. Got showers and storms in the area. Then there's that front right there, uh, basically between Meridian and Jackson to the west of Hattiesburg down to the east of Macomb. That's about 10 o'clock this evening. Watch the front. It moves on through and gets into Alabama. And look at all these wind particles coming in out of the north and northwest. So that means cooler and drier air is moving into Mississippi. We, it's been a long time coming. We need it. And it'll be in the uh, low 60s tomorrow morning, possible over 50s. Now, during the day on Thursday, we'll only make it to the lower 70s in a beautiful sunshine. And as we work our way into Friday morning, we'll be in the mid 40s for lows. And during the afternoon on Friday, we'll be mainly in the low 70s again. Look at all this nice, cool air that's pouring in from the north. Here's your forecast lows overnight tonight for tomorrow morning. Mainly in the uh, 50 to 53 degree range in the northern portion of the state. In the central portion, 50s all across the board. In our neck of the woods, it'll be slightly warmer, upper 50s to lower 60s. And along the coast, lows will be mainly in the 60s all the way across the board. Now, here's your highs for tomorrow uh, for the um, southern portion of the state portion of the state. Mid 70s to upper 70s along the immediate coast. And our neck of the woods will be in the upper 60s to lower 70s. In the central portion of the state, just mainly upper 60s all the way through. And finally, highs uh, during the day tomorrow. Look at this, only in the mid to upper 60s across the northern portion of the state. That's a current look at our forecast, and it's a nice one. All righty, thank you so much for that, Rex. Well, let's take a look at your seven day forecast. A lot of sunshine ahead Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Temperatures are going to remain into the 70s. Our coolest day will be Friday. Morning lows down into the 40s as we go into Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. Uh, but as we go into next week, we warm back up low 80s on Monday. And then there's our next chance of rain, about a 30% chance of rain on Tuesday with that front. And since I've been teasing it, there is expected to be a cool down next week. We'll look at some of the temperatures that uh, we could see into the next 10 days by next Wednesday, next Thursday highs into the 60s and 50s and possibly dipping back down into the 30s. Again, this is still out a good week or so, so things may change, but it is a positive uh, outlook. If you're ready for some colder air, uh, we want to see things trending that way and staying there. And so far that has been the case, but temperatures again for this time of the year, low 70s should be your afternoon high. And so the fact that we've been stuck in the 80s is just ridiculous. A marked change indeed, Patrick. I have to say, I'm looking forward to a cool off, just as long as we're not in a polar ice cap. Right. But, you know, a few degrees cooler would go a long way around here. Uh, I mean, I'm going to tell you this. I'm ready for a frost because I'm ready for my grass to stop growing. <laughs> I'm afraid that with today's rain, it's actually going to start growing again, <laughs> and I'm going to have to cut it one more time after I've 
already declared my final cut for the year. So. Oh, absolutely. Between that and, of course, the mosquitoes, yeah. they're never finished until you get a hard freeze. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to have to make sure to keep that mosquito spray handy at the football tailgates or wherever you're going. But uh, you know what they say, though, tis the season. I saw we have an atmospheric river out there in California. Yeah. Uh, that would be something that we uh, would normally see in the wintertime months. And especially if we're going into an El Nino year, that's something that's usually a big story for them out towards the West. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, between uh, the holidays coming up, Rivers, uh, we're finally starting to see a nice change in the seasons in our future. That's yeah, something to look forward to. It truly is. Well, for Rex Thompson, Nick LaCour, and myself, we thank you for tuning in. We're going to have more news, weather, and sports coming up tonight on WDM7 News at 5.